Maybe you can tell me why on earth we're letting the Ukrainians uh, run these labs with our money uh, with pathogens that could harm people in ways that I don't want to imagine. Shut it all down. That's my view. So the media is very excited because it's the first anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Obviously, it's a notable historical anniversary. Uh, but the media being the media, they are ignoring the elephant in the room, which is the personal corruption of Joe Biden and how it may have played a role in Russia's decision to invade Ukraine. There are two issues, I think, worth highlighting for you that the media won't tell you. But because Judicial Watch is the truth teller, you can rely on us. Uh, number one is that when Putin was looking at what Ukraine was and uh, what should be the reaction to the West of any potential invasion, I'm sure he made the calculation based on looking at what Ukraine's involvement was in the effort to undo the Trump presidency, that it was a plaything for the West liberals, uh, meaning the Biden gang and folks like that. Uh, you may recall the Ukrainian government uh, was anti-Trump tried to intervene in our election. And uh, Joe Biden famously highlighted how uh, he uh, protected his son. Well, he didn't highlight that, that he didn't admit this, but this was the effect of what he did, was he got this uh, key prosecutor fired uh, by threatening to withhold aid. And he famously admitted to that on a video. And of course, that had the benefit of protecting him from negative press and potentially legal liability as uh, he was considering his next run for office, which was, was obviously the presidency. So if you're Putin, you must look at Ukraine and say, you know, boy, they're nothing but a plaything for uh, the United States, so they're not a real government. Now, I'm not saying that's a correct presumption that Putin should make, but that's the sort of analysis I would think he would bring to bear when he's making decisions in terms of uh, uh, decisions to invade Ukraine. And then secondly, when he's making a decision to invade Ukraine, he's probably looking at the leadership of the United States, his chief adversary. And this is a leadership that's been compromised as a result of corruption, not only in Ukraine, but in Russia. So not only does Putin know that Biden is on the take because some of the money came from Russia and Burisma was a Russia friendly company and they know about what was going on in Ukraine, uh, but of course, Biden knows, Putin knows he's on the take. So if you're Putin, obviously that would be a factor in your decision to invade Ukraine, that Biden is weak because he's corrupt. And obviously there are cognitive issues that are self-evident that I guess only foreign leaders are supposed to notice, but the American media is supposed to ignore. Uh, so those are the issues that are out there uh, on the year anniversary of Ukraine. Uh, now, Judicial Watch has been in the forefront of trying to get to some of the truths related to the Ukraine scandals. Uh, for instance, we had uh, actually, it's almost two years ago, uncovered how the Obama administration knew that uh, Biden's issues with Ukraine were an issue uh, in terms of Russia relations. They were complaining when Biden went to Ukraine just before Trump became president uh, that the Russian local media was pushing this, um, basically trolling, I think the language he used they were trolling Biden on corruption because they knew about Burisma. And, and the State Department official wrote the ambassador to Ukraine at the time, the infamous Ambassador Ivanovich, saying that Burisma is the gift that keeps on giving. So you had this acknowledgement uh, uncovered by Judicial Watch documents uh, showing that even the Obama administration was aware that this was an issue for U.S. foreign policy as it relates to Russia and Ukraine. And then, of course, uh, the other big issue and you know, the left and I don't know, there was this kind of crazy support for Ukraine that was supposed to require us to not to say anything that might hurt that uh, support of Ukraine because it's all pro-Russian if you raise any questions about the way the war has been conducted. And one of the big issues were these biolabs in Ukraine. Now, the Russians were highlighting these biolabs probably in a dishonest way. But it doesn't mean that Americans can't honestly look to see, well, what's the risk of these bio labs in Ukraine that the U.S. had been helping to maintain? And now, of course, to ask that question was seen by the left as a sin. 
but Judicial Watch was encountered by uh, these leftist uh, authoritarians who don't want you to question your government. Uh, Judicial Watch asked for, I, I don't know if we ended up suing for them, but we did get records uh, confirming that the U.S. was maintaining these biolabs, helping them be maintained. It's been going on for well over 20 years now, I think. And some of the biolabs uh, contained anthrax, so we were helping manage anthrax stores in, in uh, Ukraine and, and pathogens. Now, I don't know about you, I don't, why are we helping Ukraine maintain those stores of those dangerous substances? I don't understand it. Maybe you do. Maybe you can tell me why on earth we're letting the Ukrainians uh, run these labs with our money uh, with pathogens that could harm people in ways that I don't want them to imagine. Shut it all down. That's my view. So that's what Judicial Watch has been doing. And, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that, um, and I, you know, I have, I kind of run hot and cold. You know, we fall somewhere in the middle on the debate, at least I do, on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I think this war could have been ended a lot sooner if uh, Biden was strong as opposed to weak and supported Ukraine much more strongly initially. And uh, if he was going to send weapons, he should have sent them in the beginning rather than parcel them out. It's kind of like a kid going shopping with their parents and they run out of money and they're constantly coming back to their parents for money saying, I got to get this now. And the parents are all right, I'll give it to you. And that's what we've been doing with the weapon systems for Ukraine. I don't understand the strategic logic for it. And, you know, militarily, I think it just extends the war longer than it otherwise would continue. So um, I want the war to end soon, hopefully uh, with little, few, fewer casualties. But the way the Biden administration's running things, they see it as a government program. That's my perception. You just keep on putting money into it with no rhyme or reason as to what the endpoint's going to be. Uh, and uh, remember, this is a administration that assumed the Russians were going to take over Kyiv uh, in, in like days. And that didn't obviously happen. And since then, they haven't gotten their act together. So happy anniversary, Ukraine. Good luck relying on the Biden administration. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.